it was just about, for me, emancipating my inner child, the little girl that never really felt seen or heard, and, um, you know, that wasn't famous and was, didn't have money and didn't come from means and, you know, struggled with race and identity and issues, um, you know, so. You said, Mariah, she was a scared little girl. Why was she so scared? Well, there was a lot of unrest in my house hold if there was a household. Um, and, you know, I had uh, difficulty with having come from such a dysfunctional family. I needed to kind of heal myself and heal that inner child of, that I tried to keep alive through all of the dysfunction and mess. Listen, you grew up biracial <laughs> in a white neighborhood. No big deal now. But there certainly was a struggle for you mm -hmm. to fit in. There was a series of things that happened to you that I thought was very traumatic. So you go to your friend's house. Well, so it was my friends, well, friends, and they were having this sleepover. And, you know, so they invited me. And, and mind you, we had to drive to this place, which was like hours away um, to, to the Hamptons. And so I was literally stuck there when that incident took place. But Mariah, what happened? Um, you know, so they pretty much got me in the room, cornered me, and started using the N-word over and over and over. Did you feel, Mariah, that you had to straddle both worlds or being accepted in both worlds? I, I didn't really feel accepted in any one's particular world. Mm -hmm. um, this is like in one of the songs that I, um, it's one of my favorite songs that I've done. It's called Outside, and I talk about feeling ambiguous without a sense of belonging to touch somewhere halfway. Like, these are things that I've been talking about for a long time. So it's like, people are like, oh, you know, she's talking in this book now. But I really, I always felt like I was expressing that. Your family life was complicated. Um, I want to focus on your mother mm -hmm. because I thought it was interesting when you said, listen, uh, jealousy comes with the territory when you're famous. But when it comes from your mother, mm -hmm. it's very painful. Can you talk about that dynamic? I didn't know that your mom was a singer, too. Yes. My mother um, is a very talented singer. She went to Juilliard. She's an opera singer. I've always credited her with exposing me to music, um, with uh, really kind of saying, don't say if I make it, say when I make it. So I think, you know, there's it's, it's such a complicated relationship. It, it is complicated. And I also thought that it was very difficult to me to read because there's here you are you're starting your career and your mom's singing and she says you should only hope that you could be half the singer that i am it definitely had an effect on me um i don't even know that she would even remember that yeah that one statement did live with me for the rest of my life though so it's like you have to be so careful what you say and that's why it, with my kids like i really try to acknowledge their talent and acknowledge when they you know, draw a picture for me or sing or dance or anything that they do. I want them to, to know that it's also all about them and their happiness. After reading your book, it seems like you want to be a different kind of mother. Am I correct about that? Yes, you are absolutely correct. I, uh, again, for me, it's very important that the kids always feel safe and that they feel seen and heard and that they know that they are loved unconditionally you know, and that no matter what, I'll be there for them. And that is very important to me because, you know, growing up and being alone in the house um, or alone in these dangerous situations was, um, was traumatizing, you know. Tommy Matola played a big part in your life. Did you think you were in love in the beginning? Because you said, I intended to be married to Tommy for the rest of my life. In the very beginning, I did feel protected by him. I definitely felt that we had um, a bond in music, for sure. Um, I, I felt that he believed in me, um, and that was huge. I didn't feel that um, support as a person, though. Like, I didn't feel like he got the fact that I was also, you know, a human being with my own feelings and thoughts and needs. You know, even before the actual marriage, the relationship was already so skewed meaning the power dynamics were never what they should have been in a real relationship. It's ironic, you know, my voice was being heard by millions of people 
you know, on a label that he controlled. But my actual voice as a, as a woman, as a human being, was really um, kind of shushed, you know, and not encouraged. If I hadn't emerged from that, I don't know what I would be. Do you believe that there would be the Mariah Carey, who is a huge success that we know you to be today, without Tommy Mottola? Of course, you'd be Mariah Carey, but would you be at this level? Yes. Well, I always believed that this would happen. Did you? So Good. I did. I always had that feeling because I had to feel that I could surpass where I came from, that I could overcome um, my childhood and my dysfunctional family and all the things that happened to me as a kid. So, you know, we can all speculate what would have happened or what could have happened. But, you know, what did happen was a partnership where we both worked extremely hard and we both benefited from that. Are you still open to love again? Because if there's one thing that's clear about you, you do love love. Are you open to it? I do. I'm definitely open to love. I just don't know about the marriage part of it. I mean, like, how many times can someone get married? <laughs> I don't know, Mariah. It's like I play around with the fact that, you know, we've done this two times. Of course you want all those things to work out, but things happen. What can I say? If I look at this cover, Number one, I love the cover, but what I really like is the little girl picture on the back. And so when you look back over your life and all your life experiences, the good and the bad, what would you say to this little girl? Oh, well, first of all, I would encourage her and I would tell her, you know, don't worry about everything that's, that's uh, gonna come your way, but brace yourself. 